that they never darken the door of the church. But then, as we come to verse 5, so siguro, gaya nga nasabi ko kanina, akala natin, when we, uh, you know, when we thought that when we read all these things, uh, these are the people who never come to church. But let's look at verse 5. Let's look at verse 5. But uh, then, hindi yata yan yung mga taga-church. Oh no, let's look at verse 5. Yeah, here. Verse 5. This is what it said. Sabi ganon, Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. Okay? Parang it's very shallow. You know, parang napakababaw. But the Paul says here, you know, uh, to hold on, you know, uh, they were saying that they hold to a form of godliness, although they have denied the power. Here in the description of Paul, eh? and the description of Paul, dun sa mga tao, uh, is that uh, they have the form of godliness but denying its power. So what is Paul is saying here, diba? Para when we read this, if, if we're going to really understand this verse. Eventually, when we realize, we would ask ourselves, what? I think not having a form of godliness. Diba? Para, uh, we would say that uh, is Paul talking about the people within the church? Remember, they have having a form of godliness. So basically, Paul is talking about people inside the church. He's describing professing Christians, some are church leaders, and some probably are teachers of the scripture. They are not passive, sit in few members, but those who are active in the ministry. Kasi, it's having, a, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Ito yun, di ba? There are probably some people, they have this form. Kundi, oh, ang banal si kapatid na ganito, ah, he knows a lot of teaching. But really, di ba? Baka naman, he is just a sheep. I mean, he is just a boat covering on the ship's uh, ship skin. You know, the last characteristics make clear that those individuals described in verse 2 to 4 would even claim to be Christians. But they are false and, and their followers. You know, um, they have a religion, but it's just an empty shell. They lack the reality of genuine walk with God who looks on the heart. They talk a good line, they put on a good front, but in their motives, their thoughts, their lives, and their personal relationship, they are all empty. Yung ano lang, yung pangharap lang, mabait lang, yung sa pang, pang labas, pero deep inside, they are all ampaw. Ano ba yung ampaw? Walang laman sa loob. You know, like that believing scribe in the Pharisees, false teachers and their followers are concerned with the more external appearance. Kaya nga, di ba, during the, the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, masyado silang very much particular sa kanilang appearance. The way they walk, the way they talk, di ba, but there is no moral relationship. We may appear to be Christians to the world, we may even profess to be Christians, but my question is, if you were on the trial for being a Christian, would you be convicted by the evidence of your life? Would God declare you as a Christian by the conditions of your heart? Or would He say, get away from me, I never knew you? You know, uh, is the power of God working in us? Because God never changed. And do we believe that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Or have put limits on the power of God? Diba? Sabi ka ron, have nothing to do with such people. Yeah. Sabi, these are people who presume that they are godly, but they deny the power of God. Siguro isipin natin, brother, then how can we deny the power of God? Well, uh, when we proclaim the promises of God, but we don't hold on to it. Diba? Ineclaim natin, Lord, ikaw ang provider. Pero at the end, ikaw naman ang gumagawa ng solution. Diba? Lord, you are the healer. 
Pero wala ka namang ginawa kundi agusuhin mo yung katawan mo. So there is contradiction. So it is as if that you're denying the power of the Lord. Diba? If we truly proclaim the power of God, then we will submit our lives to Him. Third point. Let's go to our third point. Corrupted course of action. So kanina, pinag-usapan natin yung challenge at yung concern ni Paul. And second, yung mga counterfeits uh, character na dinescribe ni Paul. Now, we will try to uh, understand the corrupted course. Yung mga kaparaanan. Ano ba yung mga ginagawa? What are the things that this sinners or these people or this false teacher are doing? Ano ginagawa nila? Let's look at it. Verse 6. Sabi ka na, they are the kind who warm their way into the homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning but never able to come to knowledge of truth. So basically, if we're going back to the letter of Paul, sa first letter ni Paul, dun sa first part ng chapter, binigyan niya ng warning. Sabi niya kay, sabi niya kay Timothy, watch out. Okay? Because the days are evil. And then sa succeeding verse, sabi niya, ito yung mga indication kung sino sila. Sabi niya gano'n. Ito yung mga gagawin niya. They are slanderers, they are boastful, they are proud. So watch out for this. And then the third portion is this one. Sabi niya, ito yung gagawin nila. Ito yung character, this is their character, and this is what they're going to accomplish. Sabi niya gano'n, silly, they are the kind who work. Diba? Sabi niya, silly women, silly in virtue, and the knowledge of truth and weigh down with emotional and spiritual guilt over sin. These women were easy prey for the deceitful, I mean, deceitful false teacher. Paul evident, evidently had the false teachers in Ephesus in view of this process. So, ibig sabihin, nung sinusulat ni Paul itong letter na to, ang naiisip niya, yung mga false teachers of that Ephesus. And uh, teachers manifesting some of the characteristics he just enumerated made the practice of gaining entrance into the household in which the wives were spiritually in. Ang tinuto, ang sinasabi ni Paul, ingatan, ito yung mga tao na umapasok sa mga bahay-bahay. And they take advantage of the women. O, kayo, mga kababayan, mag-ingat-ingat kayo. Kasi kayo yung unang binigyan ng warning. You are the first one. Sabi nga natin, uh, Unfortunately, if we are not going to be cautious about it, we will never realize that sometimes religion is being used by others for their own benefit. Diba? Marami naman. Ilang, ilang, how many, uh, how many worker, professed Christian worker in the past that we have known has, that has been involved with uh, women uh, adultery? Diba? Yung iba nga, mga well-known personality pa eh. Diba? Na Nai-inform. In Toronto, there is one time there was a news about a certain minister na na-involved sa isang babae, diba? I mean, in, in, in a woman. So, uh, religion is being used by others for their own benefit, especially for taking advantage of weak women. How many times we have heard that some professed minister may sabi ko nila, professed minister have taken advantage of their congregation. And basically, what is this uh, What is this telling us right now? Anong sinasabi sa atin ito? Basically, this is what it's telling us. Religion can be attractive and can become deadly when not handled properly. Diba? Uy, ang bait ni, ni kapatid na ganito. Kaya ilan ang nahulog sa kanya. Diba? Sa sobrang bait ni brother, lahat nagkakras sa kanya. Ayun, nakulog lahat. Diba? And, and let's face it, you know, if you will be honest to yourself, mga babae, uh, let me talk to the woman, and I think Kuya Big would agree with me. You don't look for handsome face. You look for handsome heart. Correct? And that is why when, when, when religion is being used, you are easily... Tangle out. Diba? Kaya nga, no? <laughs> Natatawa si, si Brother Edward. Uh, and that is true. You know, uh, 
people sometimes they use religion to call, diba? Kaya nga iba, yung ibang, you know, some other guy, they would love to go to church because they could easily pay and easily get women. Kaya mag-ingat-ingat. Yun na ang gusto ko sabihin dito. And because basically, that is what Paul is saying here. You know, they're gaining control over global women. Sabi niya, hindi naman yung, kasi at that time, by the way, at that time, yung mga babae, they, they always stay at home. Yung mga lalaki lang ang nag-work. Kaya they have the tendency to, you know, to be emotional, kaya, uh, and to be lonely, to be sad. And minsan nga, yung, kung sino pa yung down, sino pa yung madalas na nakukuha. Or, uh, how can I say it? Sila pa yung uh, mas madali yung ma- ma-see, di ba? Kasi mas madali madoko yung emotion. So, ingatan po natin yun. We have to take care of our emotion. <clears throat> Anong description? Always learning but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. But uh, what do you mean by that? Knowledge of truth first. Uh, if you are going back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, 4, this very word, knowledge of truth, is basically the same as the phrase and equating it with being saved. Here Paul is identifying those women and men who were often jumping from one false teacher or cult to another. Yung magpalipat-lipat. Punta ako dito kasi merong exposition dito. Punta ako dito kasi may exposition dito. Diba? Without ever coming to the understanding of God saving to in Jesus Christ. You know, uh, to be honest with you, maraming tao palipat-lipat ng pinupuntahan, palipat-lipat ng church, because in reality, they haven't fully understand the, salve- uh, the, 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 the salvation, uh, the full salvation, yung knowledge ng salvation ng pinigay sa ating mga pangyayon. Since the coming of Jesus Christ, the, pres- and the present age has been loaded with really, really used false teachers that can say, I mean, that can say, but does not. Now, the statement coupled with uh, about the, the one we read makes sense or make us realize that this could be false doctrines that appeal to the flesh of mankind. Marami ginagamit yung kanilang mga uh, mga kanilang uh, authority for false doctrine. So we have to be very, very careful about it. Kasi sabi doon, the knowledge of truth. Marami, you know, they always try to learn, but ne- never come to a point that they gain the knowledge of truth. This is a sad reality. The women are more vulnerable because they have more time to listen to these false teachings. You know, if the teachings appeal to your flesh, beware. It is probably not of God. It appeals to the flesh and those that appeals to the itching ears. Diba yung parang masarap ng pakinggan? Pagka yung medyo, ba't ka nga, yung preacher dyan, parang pinagagalitan lagi ako. Oh, well, you have to understand na mas important yun kasi rather than, ay, ang gusto ko dyan kasi lahat ng sinasabi niya, pabor sa akin. Diba? Kung puro pabor lahat ng sinasabi sa iyo na nagsasalita, then no, you have to understand, you have to question it out. Because ang sabi ni Paul, Things are getting worse. <clears throat> some people are constantly looking for something new. They read every how-to book. You know, they can find and never read the Bible. And the Bible has the answers to all of the life problems. Look, uh, they look there first, then read your other's book, and the Bible is the truth. What do you mean by that? This one, and you know, two. To, to explain it more simply, look at this. I think I, I, I got this from Pastor Roy. You know, a lot of people, what they will do is they will read a lot of how-to books, yung mga, or yung mga good Bible books, and then they will go to the Bible to find the support for it. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I have read this from, from this so-and-so, from this PhD person, and then let me try to find uh, from the Bible to support what he's saying. And that is the other way around. That one, we have to read the Bible first before reading other books. Diba? Do you agree with me? A lot of people are followers of this so-and-so author, and then eventually, what happened is they're just simply going to the Bible 
to find the support of what they are living. Diba? So that is